the harappan culture why harappan culture the indus valley civilization or harappan culture is older but far more developed than the chalcolithic cultures it is called harappan because this civilization was discovered first in 1921 at the modern site of harappa in west punjab now in pakistan no other cultural zone in the 3rd and 2nd millennium bc in the world was as large as the harappan 2500 bc to 1800 bc its mature phase lay between 2200 bc and 2000 bc by the 18th century bc the two important cities harappa and mohenjo-daro disappeared but the harappan culture at other sites faded gradually and continued in its degenerate phase in the outlying fringes in gujarat rajasthan haryana and western uttar pradesh dayaram sahani was associated with the excavations at harappa while r d banerji founded the remains of mohenjo daro the indian sites near rajasthan gujarat and punjab were discovered after partition and indicated that the extent of the civilization was much wider than what was originally thought so in a way the indus valley civilization is somewhat of a misnomer the other contemporary civilizations in the world were the areas around the mediterranean and the asian sea the huanghu valley in china the valley of the tigris and euphrates in iraq mesopotamia and the nile valley in egypt geographical extent from sutka gendor in southern baluchistan to alamgirpur in the mere district of uttar pradesh the known western and eastern limits of the indus civilization it is a distance of over 1550 kilometers from north to south it extends over 1100 kilometers between jammu and bhagtrav in the kim estuary in gujarat Although it flourished over a vast area the Indus civilization presents little variation Major sites in Pakistan are Mohenjo Daro Harappa Kot Diji Ali Murad Sutka Gendor etc In India major sites are at Rupar Punjab Banwali Haryana Lothal Rangpur and Sarkotada Gujarat Kali Bangan Rajasthan Alamgirpur western UP It is worth mentioning that Dhola Veera in the Bachan Taluka of Kutch district in Gujarat is the latest and one of the largest Harappan settlements to be discovered in India Dr J P Joshi and Dr R S Bisht of the Archaeological Survey of India were involved in the excavation Dhola Veera unlike other sites has three principal divisions town planning The town planning of the Indus civilization followed the grid system. The roads oriented north south and east west cut across one another almost at right angles and the city was divided into a number of rectangular or square blocks. The main roads streets some as much as 30 feet wide were quite straight. Lamp posts at intervals indicated the existence of street lighting. flanking the streets lanes and by lanes were well planned houses in none of the major cities has any stone building been found standardized burnt brick of good quality was the usual building material for dwelling houses and public buildings alike elsewhere in the contemporary world mud bricks and wattle and daub were the usual building materials and burnt bricks were altogether unknown The houses often of two or more stories varied in size but were all based on much the same plan a square courtyard around which a number of rooms the entrances were usually in wide alleys and no windows faced the streets the houses had tiled bathrooms the design of which shows that the people preferred to take their bath by pouring pitchers of water over the head and shoulders The bathrooms were provided with drains which flowed into sewers under the main streets leading to soap pits. The sewers were covered throughout their length by large brick slabs. 
no other civilization until that of the Romans had so efficient a system of drains. In Kalibangan, many houses show the presence of wells. The towns were generally divided into the citadel and the lower town. The citadel was an oblong artificial platform some 30 to 50 feet high and about 400 by 200 yards in area. It was enclosed by a thick 13 meters at Harappa crenellated mud brick wall externally riveted with burnt bricks, corner towers and occasional bastions built along the length. Although no separate fortified mound has been found at Lothal, the conception of an ac acropolis seems to have existed. On the citadel were erected the public buildings, while the lower town was the town proper, in any case at least a square mile in area. At Mohinjadaro, Mound of the Dead, there lay in the citadel a college, a multi-pillared assembly hall, a public bath, the Great Bath, and a large granary consisting of a podium of square blocks of burnt bricks with a wooden superstructure. Such blocks in mud brick have also been found on the citadel mound at Kalibangan and on the Acropolis at Lothal. But in the citadel of Harappa we come across a series of brick platforms which form the basis for two rows of six granaries. At Harappa, to the south of the granary, lay working floors probably for bounding grain and two rows of workmen's quarters. The great bath measuring 12 meters by 7 meters and 2.4 meters deep had a floor of burnt bricks. Steps led from either end to the surface while there were rooms alongside for changing clothes. A large well in an adjacent room was the source of water and an outlet in a corner of the bath drained it. The bath was probably used for ritual bathing. Economy. The Indus Valley civilization clearly had a well-developed economy. Agriculture. The Indus people sowed seeds in the flood plains in November when the flood water receded and reaped their harvests of wheat and barley in April before the advent of the next flood. No hoe or plowshare has been discovered but the furrows discovered in the pre-Harappan phase at Kalibangan show that the fields were ploughed in Rajasthan. The chief crops were wheat, barley, rye, peas, sesame, mustard, etc. Probably the people of Lothal used rice. The Indus people were the earliest people to produce cotton. To the diet were added melons, bananas, fish, fowl, mutton, beef and pork. Besides the cattle, both humped and humpless, cats, dogs and probably elephants were domesticated. The evidence regarding horse and camel is inconclusive. Trade and commerce. Flourishing trade is attested to not only by the granaries, but also by the presence of numerous seals, uniform script and regulated weights and measures in a wide area. The Harappans carried on considerable trade in stone, metal, shell, etc. within the Harappan cultural zone. They might have carried on all exchanges through barter. The Harappans had commercial links with Rajasthan, Afghanistan and Iran. They had set up a trading colony in northern Afghanistan which evidently facilitated trade with Central Asia. The Mesopotamian records from about 2350 BC onwards refer to trade relations with Meluha, the ancient name of the Indus region. The Mesopotamian texts speak of two intermediate trading stations called Dilmun and Makan between Mesopotamia and Meluha. Imports could have been matched by exports as revealed by bales of cloth from Umma in Mesopotamia bearing the imprint of an Indus seal. The findings of seals of Indus style at Ur, Lagash, Susa, Tel Asmar and other places suggest that perhaps some Indian traders were living in Mesopotamia. That this trade was at least partly seaborne is proved by the discovery of an ancient dockyard at Lothal, connected through the Bhogava River with the Gulf of Cambay. One can visualize Indian ships 
depicted on a seal and a potsherd from Mohenjo-daro cruising up and down the Arabian Sea. Arts and Crafts The Harappan culture belongs to the Bronze Age. The people of Harappa used many tools and implements of stone, but they were well acquainted with the manufacture and use of bronze. However, bronze tools are not prolific in Harappa. For making bronze, copper was obtained from the Khetri copper mines at Rajasthan and from Baluchistan and tin from Afghanistan. The bronze smiths produced not only images and utensils, but also various tools and weapons such as axes, saws, knives and spears. A piece of woven cotton has been recovered from Mohenjo-daro and textile impressions have been found on several objects. Spindon walls and needles have also been discovered. Weavers wove cloth of wool and cotton. Boat making was also practiced. Seal making and terracotta manufacture were also important crafts. The goldsmiths made jewelry of silver, gold, copper, bronze and precious stones. Silver and gold may have been obtained from Afghanistan and precious stones from South India. The Harappans were expert bead makers. The potter's wheel was in full use. The Harappans were not, on the whole, very artistically inclined. The inner walls of their houses were coated with mud plaster without paintings. The outer walls facing the streets were apparently of plain brick. Architecture was austerely utilitarian. Their most notable artistic achievement was perhaps in their seal engravings, especially those of animals, for example, the great Eurus bull with its many dewlaps, the rhinoceros with nobly armoured hide, the tiger roaring fiercely, etc. The red sandstone torso of a man is particularly impressive for its realism. The bust of another male figure, in Stetid, seems to show an attempt at portraiture. However, most striking of the figurines is perhaps the bronze dancing girl found in Mohenjo-daro. Naked but for a necklace and a series of bangers almost covering one arm, her hair dressed in a complicated coiffure, she stands in a provocative posture with one arm on her hip and one lanky leg half bent. The Harappans made brilliantly naturalistic models of animals, especially charming being the tiny monkeys and squirrels used as pinheads and beads. For their children, they made cattle toys with movable heads, model monkeys which would slide down a string, little toy carts and whistles shaped like birds, all of terracotta. They also made rough terracotta statues of women, usually naked or nearly naked, but with elaborate headdresses. These are probably icons of the mother goddess. Technology. In many respects, the Harappans were technologically backward in comparison with Mesopotamia. The Sumerians were very early invented knives and spearheads with ribs in the middle for extra strength and axe heads with holes for the shafts. But the blades of Harappa were flat and easily bent while the axe head had to be lashed to their handles. In one respect, however, they were technologically advanced compared to their contemporaries. They had devised a saw with undulating teeth, which allowed the dust to escape freely from the cut and much simplified the carpenter's task. Seals. Every merchant or mercantile family probably had a seal bearing an emblem, of often of religious character and a name or brief inscription. The standard Harappa seal was a square or oblong plaque made of steetied so stone. The Mesopotamians employed cylinder seals. One or two such seals have been found in Mohenjo-daro. The primary purpose of the seal was probably to mark the ownership of property, but they may have also served as amulets. Script. The Indus script had some 270 characters, which were pictographic in origin, but which had an ideographic or syllabic character. The script has not been deciphered so far, but overlaps of letters and some of the potsherds from Kalibangan show that writing was Bostrophedon, 
or from right to left and from left to right in alternate lines. We are not certain about the writing media, but a small pot found at Chanhudaro is regarded as an inkwell. Society The general view is that Indus Valley civilization was not the creation of a homogeneous people. It was a composite product of different races who lived and worked together in a particular environment. Mohenjo-daro had easy land and water communications. It was the meeting ground of people from different parts of Asia. However, in recent times, historians are veering round to the view that the Harappan culture is native to the soil, that the populations at these sites belonged each to a single biological group and probably descended from earlier populations in those regions. From the skeletal remains so far examined, it appears that some of the Harappans were people of the long-headed, narrow-nosed, slender Mediterranean type. A second element was the proto-Australoid with flat nose and thick lips. A single skull of Mongolian type has been found and one of the short-headed Alpine type. Father H. Heras has claimed that the Harappan language was a very primitive form of Tamil. Dress and Ornaments The men wore robes which left one shoulder bare and the garments of the upper classes were often richly patterned. Beards were worn and men and women alike had long hair. The coiffures of the women were often elaborate and pigtails were also popular. Women loved jewellery and wore heavy bangles in profusion, large necklaces, earrings, bracelets, finger rings, girdles, nose studs and anklets. Religion The mother goddess was the popular divinity, but the upper classes preferred a god, nude with two horns, much similar to Pasupati Siva. Represented on a seal is a figure with three horned heads in a yogic posture. He is surrounded by an elephant, a tiger, and his throne is a buffalo. Near his feet are two deer. The bull was held sacred. Certain trees, like people, were ascribed divinity. Phallic worship was an important element of religion. Many cone-shaped objects have been found, which seem to be formalized representations of the phallus. Certain large ring-shaped stones have also been found, which represent yonis. However, no temple has been found, though idolatry was practiced. Although no definite proof is available with regard to the disposal of the dead, a broad view is that probably there were three methods of disposing the dead. Complete burial, burial after exposure of the body to birds and beasts, and cremation followed by burial of the ashes. The discovery of the cinerary urns and jars Goblets or vessels with ashes, bones and charcoal may however suggest that during the flourishing period of the Indus Valley culture, the third method was generally in vogue. The people probably believed in ghosts and evil spirits as amulets were worn. Political Organization There is no clear idea about the political organization of the Indus Valley people. Unlike the Mesopotamians and Egyptians, they have not left behind any inscription describing their system of administration. Perhaps the Indus Valley people were more concerned with commerce and they were ruled by a class of merchants. But it can be safely stated that there was an organization like a municipal corporation to look after the civic amenities of the people. Decline the Harappan culture flourished until 1800 BC. Afterwards, its urban phase marked by systematic town planning, extensive brickwork, art of writing, standard weights and measures, distinction between the citadel and the lower town, use of bronze tools, and red ware pottery painted with black designs practically disappeared. Its stylistic homogeneity disappeared and the post-urban Harappan stage was marked by sharp stylistic diversity. 
Some traits of the post-urban Harappan culture are found in Pakistan and in central and western India, in Punjab, Rajasthan, Haryana, Jammu and Kashmir, Delhi and western UB. They broadly cover the period from 1800 BC to 1200 BC. The post-urban phase of the Harappan culture is also known as the sub-Indus culture and is more popularly known as the late Harappan culture. <laughs> 